Good morning, everyone. How are you? Thank you, everyone, for coming out this morning. If you guys feel a little bit too crowded, there is an overflow space where you can still view everything that's happening here over in the next room. But stay here as well. So I just want to acknowledge a few people in the room. First and foremost, if we can all give a round of applause to Dr. David Linningham for putting this all together. So welcome, of course, to this special announcement. I will not steal the show any further, but I do want to acknowledge Elderman John Collins Muhammad for coming out today. We do appreciate your attendance. Jay Ashcroft, of course, thank you so much for coming and speaking. Elderman James Page, we do appreciate your attendance as well. Of course, Dee Lewis Reed is in the room, so we do appreciate the president for coming out. Thank you so much. And Steve Roberts will be here, so thank you. We do appreciate your attendance, and I am now going to turn this over. I'm going to turn it over. Someone's coming up here. <laughs> Someone's coming up here. Bear with me, guys. Thank you, Jay. I do appreciate you. We're going to turn it over to Jay Ashcroft. Bear with me, guys. Thank you, Jay. Let me just say it's a great privilege to it's a great privilege to thank innovative pioneers on what they're doing, not only to make healthcare better, not only to make the city of St. Louis and the region better, but to create opportunity for this community and people in the area. And I am just thrilled to see what people are doing and how they are working. I, look, I, I believe the greatest thing that any of us can do in life is be consequential. And the most important way we can be consequential is to do things for others. And when I look at a project like this, when I look at people, I mean, we have people from virtually from around the world that are collaborating to come to St. Louis to create something out of this historic building that will change lives, change destinies. It alone will do that, and it will fertilize this area for other growth because of it. And I just am so thankful for what they're doing. And I have the great privilege of introducing Dr. Jose Torres. I could talk about him for a long time, but he can talk about himself better. Over 30 years doing this, over tens of millions of grants to provide better ways to provide health care, especially to communities that maybe haven't always gotten the health care they shouldn't have gotten. He's the chancellor for this development and for this school, and he is going to be a beacon and a guide to legions of individuals that will change their lives by coming here and go on to make their mark on the world. Dr. Torres, please come up here. Administrator, friends, guests. It's a privilege for me to be here uh, sharing this uh, glorious moment. Uh, let me reflect back. I, I was hired in 1987, 33 years ago. I was a young, handsome <laughs> guy. Uh, I was hired as a biochemist because they were about to start a research uh, program in, uh, in this institution. At that time, the name of the institution was uh, Ponce uh, School of Medicine and Health Sciences. That was uh, in 1987. So I had the pleasure of going to that building. The building that our school was located was on the grounds of the Pontifical Catholic University. Actually, our building was a seminary before the current medical school. And you will see by the narrow hallways. So the library was the main chapel 
for eating all the sorry. People were kneeling in the morning when we came into the school. <laughs> we have like uh, 50 students, Nelka students, only the MD program. So as time go, it went by, and you know, the school uh, uh, helped into other programs, academic programs, uh, like, like clinical psychology, uh, public health, uh, nursing, uh, the MSNS program. Now we're thinking about odontology in the future. So it's, it has been for me a privilege. I have seen the evolutions and revolutions of this institution for 40, not of 44 years. You know, the, the school is uh, as an institution 44 year old, uh, but I have been there 33 years in different roles. So I have uh, the privilege to uh, meet the. Uh, but Lenningham for the first time in year 2014, when I, we first met and Doug, and I was um, impressed by his the, the mission, his mission, his vision uh, for, for, for Rico and the institution. So I, I was cultivated for, for that. And then I, uh, he named me uh, uh, Vice President for Academic Affairs. We accepted with a certain, uh, Thinking and that you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big, big, big uh, what's about to happen. So I, uh, I, I can tell you, uh, in regards to the medical program, which is relevant today, uh, the medical program has evolved in 44 years. When to, uh, 2014, when David, uh, Dr. Lenihan came on board, uh, we experienced that transition to uh, educational technology. We uh, uh, you know, doing the, the, what we call the dynamic classroom, well, you know what it is. Uh, I was, I, I had to be very honest with you. When that idea came to our, uh, to our, I see a uh, Rick Noel laughing. But, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was trained as a classical biochemist, and then I used the board. That's, that's my, my that my uh, technology went that far. And so when we came to the dynamic classroom, I was kind of nervous and hesitant. So, this work, let me tell you, I, I came a believer immediately, almost immediately. When you see the, the, what it does for the students, students uh, learn quicker, they perform better. You start seeing the, the number, uh, the performance in steps to the head. The next day, licensing examination scored step one, step two, going up significantly. Our matching rates are increasing significantly. So I think this is uh, this system is doing very good for, for the students. And I, and I became a believer. So I, we have uh, uh, a, Nicole is telling me that my time is up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, just so excited to be part of this. And I thank the leadership and mission of Dr. Eddie and Dr. Lenningham to give me this opportunity to be uh, in, in this school. I'm working with him and working with the marvelous faculty. I, I, I also I have to thank Dr. Olga Rodriguez, who has been the dean. Thank you. Disadvantaged population. When we say white cultural, we don't we don't use those words as punchline. We mean it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Almost 15 years ago, I was visiting Toro College of Medicine in 
Harlem and New York. When I started asking detailed questions about student outcomes, the president of the university shrugged his shoulders and said, you have to talk to Dr. David Lennon. The university president then sat me in the large, empty lecture hall and sent in Dr. Lennon. And the first time I saw Dr. Lennon, I could not actually see him. He had like six binders of information obscuring his face. When we sat down and got properly introduced, Dr. Lenahan walked me through what was actually in those binders. He was tracking the ability of every single student to master each competency in the step one medical course. I was amazed. I'm in the education world. I'd never seen anything like it. He was literally tracking test questions and answers by hand in Microsoft itself. When I was uh, when I expressed some interest in the system, Dr. Lanham was a little surprised. He got really excited and brought me to his office. And on the whiteboard in his office, there was a huge, long, complex mathematical equation. I was a history major in college, and I could not follow anything on that whiteboard. While I could not decipher the math, I did realize that these equations and data represented a dramatic shift not just in medical education, but all digital education. This tracking of questions and answers was the beginning of Dr. Lenahan using predictive analytics to understand how each student was progressing and what interventions each student needed to maximize their individual talent and potential. I was hoping. Dr. Lennon, Dr. Lennon and I started having lunch every few months at the Time Warner Center in Manhattan to try to develop this novel approach to medical education to something more. Flash forward over a decade. Today, I serve as a board chair of Ponce Health Sciences University, and I'm honored to play just a small part in watching Dr. Lennon quite literally help change the face of medical education and the medical the digital curriculum that Dr. Lenahan has developed, along with faculty and staff of Ponce Health Sciences University, has had a demonstrably positive impact on students. The result of Dr. Lenahan's intense focus on student success and achievement. Since Dr. Lenahan started as president of Ponce Health Sciences University and implemented this data-driven analytical system, the school has seen an increase in step one board passage rates from 62% to 93%. I want everyone to understand what that means. We put the school, and Dr. Lenahan and Olga and, and Dr. Torres, um, took a school and increased their board passage rates. Every individual who got through that school had a huge difference. And this jump in board passage rates is a true sign that Dr. Lenahan's vision from 15 years ago with all those binders is actually working. By getting bilingual students who would otherwise be passed over by medical schools, not just through medical school, but successful in medical school, and getting amazing rotations afterwards, we're quite literally, again, changing the face of medical education. The impact we're making is clear. In the last seven years, enrollment in PHSU's medical program has grown 114%. It's not just us, the world is watching too. PHSU medical degree applications have jumped 26%, and students are increasingly viewing this new, highly effective, digital first technology teaching methodology as superior. PHSU has opened doors and pathways to medical careers for students who would otherwise never have gotten a chance to wear a white coat. I am thrilled to see how PHSU has grown in the last 10 years and how it will continue to grow in the future, especially here in Dr. Lenahan's hometown. Now, St. Louis occupies a very interesting part in this story. When I meet someone of Dr. Lenahan's talents, I frequently ask questions like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And when I struggle with that, I say, well, what's your dream? At one of our very earliest lunches in Manhattan all those years ago, Dave said very distinctly, I want to build a new medical school in my hometown of St. Louis. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Dr. David Lenahan. 
The visionary I met almost 15 years ago in that cavernous classroom is making the dream of medical education for all and for many who frequently wouldn't have had an opportunity a reality. And by the way, now he can cross off from his to-do list and his dream, <laughs> the building of a medical school right here in St. Louis. With that, I'd like to introduce you. Here. Hey, Daryl. <laughs> and last but not least, I'm sure she probably thought I forgot her. 
It is my wife who has to put up with me, traveling all the time, <laughs> screaming at a telephone, and then coming upstairs and trying to talk to her. So she's been on this road just as much as I have. So we love you. Yeah. I believe our mission to train culturally competent physicians, highly qualified physicians, is more important than ever. And the opportunities that we're creating allows us to impact not only today, but what we're building for the next 100 years. What we're building here today, what we're built in Ponce, what we're doing across the globe, will be with us for the next 100 plus years. And that can't be overstated. And I know with all the politicians in the room, everyone wants to talk about the economic impact. How many jobs are you going to create? I get asked that all the time. What are you going to, how much money is going to be invested? What's the economic impact year after year? That's all the great. That's not why I'm here. I know that's important. I know that's why you know we, it's going to make a big difference in the north side. I saw what it did in Harlem. I've seen what it did in Orange County, New York. I've seen what it's doing in Puerto Rico. I know what it's going to do to the north side. But there's something else. The impact on health care outcomes. What's going to happen to the people that live in that community when you put a medical school in? Is going to increase significantly. We see this time and time again that academic health centers placed into communities are vital to improving the health care outcomes of that community. Great jobs, that's great. Maybe that's part of what happens with the health care outcomes. But that's why I'm here. That's why I know Jose and Olga are here too. That's the important thing that we're getting ready to talk about. And when we talk about training physicians, we talk about shortages of 100,000 physicians across the globe, or excuse me, across the United States. And we see the increasing population happening in the United States. The lack of physicians that we're talking about, the 100,000, isn't happening in Clinton. It's not happening in Purdue. It's happening on the north side. It's happening in rural Missouri. It's happening in places where there are low socioeconomic demographics. That's what we are going to concentrate on. That is what we are going to do. And I'm struck by truly how important this this announcement is in this moment in time, the significant changes happening with COVID affecting our communities. Just looking out, last time I did this years ago, there were no masks. Now we're all wearing masks. Our lives have changed. And what are the communities that have been hit the most impact? The Hispanic communities, the black communities, the rural communities, those from lower socioeconomic. The importance of what we're doing to help provide and train physicians to go back into these areas to help communities cannot be overstated. And that's why I think this is such an important aspect that we're talking about. And it's when we look at the students that are going into medical school across the United States, the demographics of those students are indistinguishable from the demographics of where we have the most doctors. The students that are coming in from private schools, Students that are coming in from you know wealthy parents. So our it's not in my notes here. I'm going to go off script here a little bit. Our average parental income is forty thousand dollars a year. The average medical school is running about three hundred thousand. That's a significant difference, guys. And when we take students that these other schools haven't looked at, mostly because of their socioeconomic status, they haven't had all the resources necessary. It becomes a big deal. Why is it a big deal? 18% of the minority populations don't trust their physicians. That's a staggering number, especially in a world where we're trying to get everyone vaccinated. And we're trying to go into the communities and convince people that this is important to get done. We have to start building that trust in our communities that need it, in these lower socioeconomic backgrounds. And that's why investing our time in this type of school is so important. And St. Louis is an old, Rust Belt City has long struggled to provide adequate care to much of its inner city population. Medical and medical education fail to keep pace with the changing nature of our community. These are the communities in our state that they're right. This is for you, Jay. There are communities in our state without a single physician. Think about that. Districts, communities, counties without a single physician. I think there's six or eight of them, if I'm not mistaken. We need to do that. Schools like this help us do better. And under the direction of Dr. Torres, and Dr. Rodriguez, our Dean of Medicine, and our Chancellor, we've been able to open the opportunities to a lot of minority candidates. In fact, we are one of the largest underrepresented minority medical schools in the United States.
United States. And, and, and with some of the highest born passengers. So that's very important to actually say. Students of Ponce have access to combined, combined learning and traditional type of education with the anatomical sciences, with the labs, but we also train our physicians in the cultural competency of healthcare. That's what the digital curriculum that Dr. Torres was talking about and Barry was talking about. By moving the curriculum to a digital platform, a dynamic classroom, we now have more time to concentrate on our labs, to concentrate on how we actually interact with the patient, how we treat the patient. I'm going to give one example of why this is so important. This is a very personal, my wife will know this, a very personal story. About three or four years ago, I had a heart issue. I went to Mercy Home. Went into Mercy Care, didn't even know I was flying home. I was flying back from Puerto Rico. I finished my week early. I came back on a Thursday night, and I didn't feel well. I felt like I had the flu or something. It was pre COVID, so I wasn't thinking COVID. So I went into the ER, and I actually let some people go in front of me. So I'm like, ah, I just got the flu. You know, I'm just figuring it out. And so some people go in, they go up before me, and they bring me in. They do an EKG. Everything's fine. Everything looks great. Everything's good. The only thing that was a little bit of a problem is my cardiac enzymes were up. And so the doc goes, look, if I keep you overnight, we're just going to do a cath. We don't think anything's a problem. Um, but just we're going to stay overnight. Next morning, we go up to the cath lab. They do the cap, and you're kind of drugged up, right? So you're kind of a little loosey. I could hear what they were saying, but I wasn't sure what was going on. And then the doc comes in the room after everything was done, and in the room is my wife. And he goes, Dave, you got a problem. You got some serious blockage on your descending artery on your heart. We have to do surgery. Well, that's a tough thing to hear, right? So my wife and I are trying to process this. I was debating whether or not to tell Daniel or what I was going to do. I picked up the phone and I called him. All right. That's me. The patient has the same problem in Puerto Rico, or even in North St. Louis. Has the same exact problem, same physiology. Doctor walks in the room. There might be 25 people in that room. The neighbor, the grandpa, the nephew, the grandsons, the granddaughters, everybody in the room. Now, medically, what you do is exactly the same. Are you going to do surgery? Are you going to do central line? Are you going to give drugs? How are you going to handle it? Whether it's in Puerto Rico, North St. Louis, or in, in Mercy, the medical care is going to be the same. But how you interact with that patient, that cultural understanding is significant. Why? I'm an Irish Catholic boy from the Midwest. You don't touch me unless you absolutely have to. I'm not touching anybody. <laughs> <you. laughs> right? But down in Puerto Rico, you have to hug everybody. Drives me crazy about it. But you, <laughs> you have to hug everybody. Yeah. Doesn't change the care, but it changes the patient perception, the trust that that patient has with the doctor. The understanding, the patient compliance, how well they interact with the care process. That improves health outcomes. And that's why building a medical school, that's why training cultural competency improves the health outcomes from where you're placing it. And I can't tell you how important that is. And by the way, I know we don't like to talk about money. I tried not to talk about it in the beginning. But that also drives significant amount of CMS revenue dollars to the health facility. Does it improve patient care? Patient satisfaction is often a way that hospitals are rated for their Medicaid, Medicare reimbursements. So it starts driving capital into a community that maybe didn't have, which is what we hope to happen in the north side. So I do treat people who love St. Louis. My wife and I lived overseas. We could have moved back to Cambridge in the United States. We were in Scotland for a long time in Cambridge. And one of the reasons I came back was because of the world-class education that exists in this community. Washington University, of St. Louis University, of Homsul, you're here in Missouri. You have all the healthcare talent that we need, and I'm happy, I'm excited to be part of that family. Some of the greatest health institutions on the planet, and now we get to work alongside them. They concentrate on something a little bit different, but we get to work with them as a team, and I'm very excited to be, to be part of that. With Ponce's expanded MD program, we'll be able to serve and support more MD students ensure students will have both the technical skills and cultural competency to provide excellent medical care to underserved communities. Great. I read that so that the public relations people are bad. But what the hell does that mean? <laughs> right? On the north side, there's going to be students wandering around with coats. They're going to become doctors. The young, young kids in junior high, K through 6 and high school, are going to see them. They're going to interact. They're going to be at Starbucks. They're going to go get a coffee or go get a sandwich at the, the shop in the Northside Mall. So they're going to go get food up there. 
And they're going to see there are other paths. And these are great jobs. These are great jobs because they're good paying, they're lifelong, and they're going to help improve the community. And so I'm really excited about what we're going to do because I have seen and done this before. And getting it to St. Louis is especially important to me, my family, and where we're going. Together we can and will develop programs that strive to address the long-term position shortage, as I just said, we're going to start training them. While ensuring that we address the long-term shortage also means that we're addressing the historic inequalities, not just in healthcare, but healthcare and education. And it takes us to take a step to do that. Paul and I, uh, Mr. McKee and I have often had this discussion. How you do that is you build these assets, you build these things, you train these students in the areas where people actually need. We don't go off and build it somewhere else, we build smack dab in the middle of the north side. Why? Because that's where the care is needed. We need those students to come in because we know if those students come into our school, they're going to go back and practice in that community. And that's how you make a difference. That's how you stand up and do what your life mission is about. And I'm really excited to be part of that because I know in 100 years from now, this will have made a significant difference to you there. And I want to thank all of you for joining this, me this morning for this journey. This is just the first step, guys. All right? Nicole's coming here again. <laughs> this is just the first step, and it's going to be a lot of steps. There'll be ups and downs as we go along, but I'll tell you what, this will make a major difference, and most of the people in this room are going to help us get to that next stage. So thank you very much for coming in. Before you clap, we got one more thing to do to show the video. Yes. So we're going to show a little commercial here. Because we forgot. Is that all? So excited to see the video. That's exactly what, it, what we do in Ponce, and that's exactly what we will continue to do here in St. Louis. Um, I, I have to, 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 to confess that I often think about the mission of PHSU. The mission is to educate bilingual ethical professionals who provide compassionate, culturally competent health care and generate high-impact research to reduce health disparities in the populations we serve in Puerto Rico and the U.S. through high quality education in a diverse environment. For many years, it has been our guiding principle and has helped our program open new doors 
for students that otherwise may not have been able to access the kind of medical education necessary to serve communities most in need. Looking forward, that mission continues to drive us to invest in the students and communities that will most benefit from the kinds of opportunities we have to offer. Right now, we are in a pivotal moment where both our Ponce and St. Louis campuses are undergoing tremendous transformation. Dr. Lenny, I was hesitant to speak about money and investment, but the fact is that Ponce, PHSU in Ponce, is doing a great expansion that will generate millions of dollars in economic activity to Ponce and Puerto Rico. St. Louis, our expanded LCME accredited medical education program will open new doors for students in St. Louis, Missouri, and the community at large. I am inspired by the kind of success our students are having with our educational programs and look forward to seeing how our programs continue to expand and grow in the future. Very proud of what we're doing and to carry the responsibility of this exciting and important project. I will end by introducing Dr. Finesse Philip Owen, Chief Medical Officer at Mercy Hospital. I want to take this opportunity to thank Mercy for the support at the main clinical campus for our School of Medicine at St. Louis. Dr. Owen. I'm Dr. Phil Warren. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, Dr. Rodriguez, Dr. Torres, Dr. Lenahan, and uh, the other uh, staff of PHSU for inviting me to speak here. Uh, and I'm just really excited uh, to be a part of this. You know, today's announcement really demonstrates the kind of opportunity for innovation, economic growth, uh, premier healthcare, and academic excellence that we all know St. Louis is known for. Um, I should probably back up a second. And one of the main reasons I'm speaking to you, to, to you today is Joan Schaefer, who is our uh, department chair for graduate medical education at Mercy, you know, had the nerve to go on vacation this week. <laughs> so I'm here speaking to you. But, uh, it, you know, uh, like Joan, you know, I've spent 20 years in uh, academic medicine before being part of Mercy. Uh, I was a fellowship director for pediatric critical care fellowship. So, like Dr. Schaefer, I also have a big passion for medical education. Uh, and when Dr. Schaefer first approached me about this, you know, she's constantly, you know, been battling, you know, with what everyone in healthcare is, you know, another program, another expansion, where are we going to find the time, the resources, the people? And, you know, she started telling me about this, you know, my first reaction was, what PHSU is doing, this is exactly what Mercy is all about. Uh, and as I was, I was able to explain sort of the goals, the mission, the values, you know, it was a, exactly aligned with what Mercy does. So we talked to the executive team about this, this was, one of the easiest cells I've ever had to make. So, you know, I, I really think it's, it's something that's destined to work out well. You know, like PHSU, Mercy also has a very proud tradition of innovation and a mission of delivering healthcare to people where they live and on their terms. And that's happened ever since Mercy started in, in Ireland. Um, and so, you know, uh, Mercy has a big footprint, you know, St. Louis is kind of a flagship hospital, but we have a rural footprint that stretches from here to central Oklahoma, covers Northwest Arkansas, a little Kansas. Uh, you know, we uh, are expanding, you know, uh, urban opportunities here. We're looking at a new clinic in uh, Ferguson uh, Community Center as part of the West Philadelphia Development Area. Uh, so I really think there are a lot of things about our, our, our systems and, and our organizations that really line up very nicely. Uh, PHSU's goal of enhancing diversity and inclusion uh, in physician workforce, as well as bringing healthcare back to those who need it the most, you know, again, a very closely aligned to those values. Uh, the opening of this medical school is a very significant milestone for St. Louis, uh, and this new partnership between Mercy and PHSU St. Louis will allow medical students to participate in and, and complete meaningful clinical work right here in the newest hometown. So, again, yeah, welcome. Uh, we look forward very much to seeing how this expanded program can create a more diverse and highly skilled physician workforce. Uh, this will work by elevating aspiring medical professionals that may otherwise be ignored by the larger medical community or the more traditional uh, educational path. Ways. So, speaking on behalf of Mercy, I would really like to thank PHSU for giving us the privilege for being part of this really exciting new endeavor. Uh, and we wish PHSU and staff, faculty, and students only the best as we move forward together. So, thanks again for the opportunity to speak with you today.
Well, first, my accomplishment is that I didn't fall down walking up the stairs. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, my name is Dr. Stephanie Schuette, and I am the campus director for PHSU St. Louis. First, I'd like to echo all of the previous speakers by thanking you for joining us today for this significant, uh, significant moment in both the history of PHSU and in the history of St. Louis. St. Louis is already home to a number of highly comprehensive and well-regarded medical programs, and we are thrilled to be a part of a legacy of strong medical education in St. Louis. My thanks to Dr. Lenahan, Dr. Rodriguez, Dr. Torres, the PHSU community, and the board for their vision and support of what PHSU St. Louis can be. PHSU St. Louis opened in 2018 and is already home to the Master of Science in Medical Sciences and the Doctorate of Clinical Psychology, programs that are the first of their kind in this area. I would also like to take a moment to recognize the St. Louis faculty and staff who have built the foundation which allows us to start the MD program here in St. Louis. It is truly my privilege to lead a team of faculty and staff that are not only talented and dedicated, but also reflect the diversity of the student body. And I look forward to continuing to grow that team. I have no doubt that with our current team that we will hire in the coming months and our partnership with Mercy, a leader in healthcare in the area, that we will succeed in this endeavor and make a significant impact on individuals, families, and the St. Louis community. Thank you all again for joining us, and we look forward to continuing to share updates and news with all of you. We hope to see some of you later this evening to cheer on the Cardinals and Dr. Lenahan as he throws out the first pitch. For those of you who are joining us this evening, if you could please stop by the second floor on your way out to pick up your tickets and a gift from us. And finally, <laughs> thank you so much for coming. And please join us next door for lunch. So at your convenience, everyone can get up and go and enjoy the lunch, because we're going to take this room and use it for media interviews. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you.